You know, small businesses are hoping to cash in on this uh, buying frenzy, online sales set to pop. We've been talking about that. But how do they compete with the big guys? We have the president and CEO, Small Business and Entrepreneurship <laughs> Council. Karen Kerrigan is our guest right now. It's good to see you, Karen, on this okay. uh, big shopping day, big shopping season that we're getting into. We talk all the time about how, say, Walmart kind of catches up or competes with the threat from Amazon and so, oh, they're doing all right now online. But both of those and other big companies would threaten small business, right? How's small business keeping up? You know, small retailers and businesses are doing quite well. I mean, one of the things is, you know, they are small, they are close to the customer and they have the flexibility to re respond to a lot of what's happening in the marketplace, particularly the disruption that's happening in retail. In fact, small retailers are having a really, really strong year According to SageWork, um, privately held small retailers have been growing by, have had growth of 5.4 percent during mm -hmm. this past year. Yeah, so they're bad. really faring well. Not bad at all. Um, what about online? And is uh, Amazon, which might threaten some large retailers in other cases, helping out there? Well, you know, again, um, small businesses and retailers, they're, they're adapting to this. They're embedding technology um, across their operations. They're really responding to all the disruption in terms of taking advantage of online sales, mobile sales. Um, there's a lot of great technology out there that they're using in order to meet customers where they are. So they're taking advantage of that. And again, they're hanging in there. They're doing well. Right. I mean, obviously, there's some, you know, that, that could be left behind. But for the most part, again, small retailers are responding uh, to this whole new disruption. Interesting. I, um, let me talk about their concerns going forward from here, because that seems to be kind of the, the theme in whether it's financial markets or just um, economic discussions that we've been having the last few weeks is that things are great now. We have these retail numbers coming in, many of them are terrific. Yeah. But in the future, people are concerned about all sorts of things, whether it's rising interest rates and economic slowdown overseas that maybe hits us here, trade tensions and the like. So what about the, the outlook from some of these small business owners you're, you're talking to? Are they starting to turn negative, some of them? Or? You know, it's just a, a little caution. I mean, there's yeah. uncertainty now given the outcome of the election and what that means for policy. Yep. I think, you know, given, uh, I mean, certainly there's been a lot of policy momentum, pro-growth policy me momentum, which has provided a boost in terms of confidence and growth. So, you know, that's a disruption, I think, that, you know, they're looking at and seeing that how it might affect the economy. We did a post-election uh, survey, and it found that, you know, about 40 percent of these business owners were not as optimistic or were a little bit more pessimistic about right. where we're going to be next year. So there is that concern, and I think policy is going to drive how they do, and that's why we're pushing for a big lame duck policy boost in order to, to get us through 2019. On taxes, or? Well, there's a few issues. Health care is one, because health care is the biggest concern of small business owners in terms of the cost. So we're looking at um, uh, extending a reprieve from the health insurance tax, which directly hits small businesses. There's also a huge package, the Jobs Act 3.0, which is a capital access and capital formation package. And this would be an enormous boost for small businesses, capital formation in general, and then the overall economy. So uh, again, there's things that this Congress can do, I think, that can carry us into 2019. But certainly there are uncertainties. I don't know how confident you should be about that this lame duck session. Someone was telling us <laughs> earlier that some of these even Republican members of Congress on the way out, the ones that lost, they kind of blamed the president for it and they might not work with them as much in the lame duck. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, how confident are you that some of those priorities can actually you know, turn into realities? I'm confident about a few of them. I mean, being on the ground here and, you know, a lot is, you know, a lot is taking place on the House side and we need to get it through the Senate side. And we do find to be a different dynamic over there. So I'm pretty confident, at least about a couple of them. We'll have to see, but we keep pushing. Yeah, always. Uh, that's yes. easier to be confident. Better, why not just be a little optimistic and not just assume that that's they don't get That's how we get things done, done right? here, Connell. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. Otherwise, you can't just give up. Good to see you, Karen. Have a good one. Great Thank you for coming you. on.